In this video, we're going to use the idea of a force of interest for both the compound interest case and the simple interest case to determine an accumulated amount. And it's going to be most effective if you've got the formulas for the force of interest in these cases memorized. I will do the problem first, assuming you have those formulas memorized, and then I will go back and say, okay, how do you rederive the formulas if you don't know them? So you've got two people, Tani and Fabio depositing money into different accounts. Tawny's account has a nominal interest rate of 10% per annum, meaning per year, convertible semi-annually. And when, when you read that, the first thing you want to say to yourself is that's compound interest, okay? Compounded twice per year. Fabio deposits 1,000 to a different bank account, which credits interest with simple interest, okay? So that's not typical, but it's what we'll go with here in this problem. At the end of five years, the forces of interest on the two accounts are equal, and Fabio's account is accumulated to Z. Determine Z how much Fabio's account has um, accumulated to. So let's solve the problem. Again, first of all, by assuming you've got the formulas for the force of interest in these situations memorized. And then, like I said, after we solve the problem that way, we'll go back and rederive those formulas. When you have compound interest, First thing to realize there is the force of interest is constant. And in fact, delta, the constant force of interest, is the natural log of the annual growth factor, 1 plus i, where i is the effective annual interest rate. i is the effective annual interest rate. That's not 10% here for, for Tommy. What is it? Well. She converts her interest twice per year. It's 10% per year, convertible semi-annually. You take the 10%, divide by 2, and add 1 to it. That's the growth factor for every 6 months, so you have to square that to get the annual growth factor of 1.1025. So the natural log of 1.1025 is the constant force of interest in Tawny's case. That natural log, press the natural log button right here. It's about 0 0.09758. I think I will go ahead and just keep only that many decimal places and use that number. 0 0.09758. That's going to be pretty close. All right, so that's what Tawny's constant force of interest is. Fabio's force of interest is going to be the same of that as that at the end of five years. What is Fabio's force of interest in general, though? In general, with simple interest, it's a function of t. It's not constant. And it's probably worth memorizing that it's i over 1 plus i times t where i now is the simple interest rate for simple interest. Simple interest rate. That it, as, it is quoted as an annual rate. There and there. This is supposed to equal Tawny's force of interest when t is 5. So what we get from this is that if I replace t by 5, and set it equal to 0 0.09758, that that should give me the value of i, which is Fabio's simple interest rate. And once I've got Fabio's simple interest rate, I can solve the problem. So solve this equation for i. You can write i is, I'll multiply both sides by 1 plus 5i, you'll get 0 0.09758 plus 5i times 0 0.09758. So I'm going to multiply this by 5 here, times 5 gives me 0.4879i. Subtract 0.4879i from both sides to get i isolated on the left side. So I can negate this and add 1 to it to figure out the coefficient of i on the left side to be 0.512098i equals 0.09758. Now divide both sides by 0 0.512098. On the calculator, I'll take its reciprocal to get this and multiply times 0 0.09758. Looks like I, with a pretty high interest rate, 
0.190549. That's what I is. Once we've got I, now we can finish the problem. Fabio deposits uh, 1,000 at simple interest. Uh, that means you need to multiply 1,000 by 1 plus I times T. I we've just found to be 0 0.190549 times T. T is going to be five years. Ignore this dot there. That's a mistake. So multiply this thing by five. Add one to it. And multiply by 1,000 giving an answer of about 1952.75 is what you get. That is the answer. That is Z and solves the problem. All right, well, what if you forgot that in compound interest, the force of interest is constant? You, you really definitely should not forget that. But what if you've forgotten the this one you might be more likely to forget, the formula for the force of interest when you have simple interest. It all goes back to the definition of what the force of interest is in general. In general, delta sub t is if capital A of t is your accumulated amount as a function of time, it's the derivative of that function divided by itself. It's the relative instantaneous relative rate of change you might say a prime would be the instantaneous rate of change if you're dividing by the current amount that's the instantaneous relative rate of change for compound interest with effective annual interest rate i you can write the formula for capital a of t like this its derivative using the fact that the derivative of 1 plus i to the t is natural log of 1 plus i times that same function. This derivative is going to be a of 0 times natural log of 1 plus i times 1 plus i to the t. This is an exponential function. The base is different than the number e. So you need to multiply by the factor natural log of whatever that base is, 1 plus i in this case. If you now divide a prime by a, everything cancels except for the natural log. The a, zero, a of zeros cancel and the 1 plus i to the t's cancel. After you do the division, you get natural log of 1 plus i, which is a constant. So in fact, delta sub t is not a, it's a constant function of t, you can just call it delta. For simple interest, the formula for capital A of t is that it equals a of 0, a of 0 again is just the starting amount, times not 1 plus i to the t power, but instead 1 plus i times t. The derivative of this, if you think about this, this is a linear function, is going to be a of 0 times i. So now take the ratio, a prime divided by a using this fact up here. The a of zeros are going to cancel. The starting amount doesn't matter. You get i over 1 plus i times t, which is the exact same formula that we used up here. Okay, So you can rederive these things without too much trouble. You really should memorize the, the fact that the force of interest is constant in the compound interest case to be natural log of 1 plus i, where i is the effective annual yield or effective annual rate. Um, I think this is probably worth memorizing too, but it's not too hard to derive.